All right, let's do that. All right. <clears throat> Go ahead. All right. So good morning, everybody. Today is the 24th of June. Um, so we actually passed the longest day of the year in the Northern Hemisphere this week. And we're now getting, the days are getting shorter. Um, so what we, Dan and I were just talking about upping it a little bit, changing it a little bit, making it a little bit more interesting. So, um, well, first of all, the slaughterhouse of failure is not in our destiny. We shall persevere until we succeed, Old Mandina modified. So today we're gonna to make a little interactive so that we can um, get some take from, get, get, take some questions and we will pose and get some take from you guys and see what you think. And basically it's this. We, we see lots of inspiring quotes all the time. I mean, everybody come many times you look at something and there's an inspiring quote. Um, for example, uh, I'll just give you two or three and then we'll go into some of it. Um, starve your distractions and feed your focus. You don't need a new plan for the year. You need commitment. That is from Chris Jammy. And the first one was that we don't know. Um, and, and, you know, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to tr just try one more time. Uh, like a golfer, he has a whole, he has a 300 yard drive and he's going to try and do that all the time. Or a hole in one and he'll spend the rest of his life doing that. Just examples. So, um, you know, um, Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Charles Swindle. Um, we've got lots and lots of quotes that we, we can go through. So what I thought we'd do is I would ask a couple of questions to start and say, you know, we talk about mindset. That, that's what this call is all about. What exactly is mindset? Is it, it set mind? Is your mind set? Or are you setting your mind? One is an adverb and one is a stagnant state of affairs. Is your mind set or is your mind, or, or your mind, are you setting your mind? Is your mind set for as, a, as a something is going to happen? Is your mind proactive? Are you looking forward or are you looking backwards? You know, are we? Are we, are we looking to be proactive and do something or are we looking to fix something? You know, do we just like to fix something rather than go forward? You know, what motivates your mindset? The thrill of something new and exciting or the security of what you already know? What is the genesis of your mindset? So how rigid or flexible is your mind? The difference between totally convinced and being opened or fixed in dogma. These are just notes that I, we wrote and we just started to, you know, how much does your ego interfere with your beliefs? Do what is right or what others think you should do. There are lots of other things that we can, that we go into, but Dan. Yeah. You know, when you start talking about mindset, you know, you have to think about what your motivations are for your mindset. You know, your motivations for personal growth or your motivations uh, to help others change your mindset, to help others change their mindset. Um, what are your motivations for cultivating a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset? And, you know, when I first got involved in this business, you know, you know it was completely different from what I was doing. And there was a little bit of hesitancy. You know, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person who really cares a whole lot what people think about what I do. But for some reason, when I got involved in this business, because it was kind of, I think, because it was out of my comfort zone, because I didn't know a lot about nutrition and antioxidants and, and you know, supplements that I, for some reason in my mind, I, for, you know, I, wor I was worrying about what people would think about me telling them that this is what I was doing now. And I don't know 100% why that was, but once I got past that, and change my mindset about it, 
um, things, that's when things started to change for me. So you have to, you know, think about why you're doing this business. Do you really, you know, are you concerned about what others think? Because that's a, that's a whole mindset um, about what you're doing and, and how are you going to justify that in your brain to move forward and, and have that growth mindset to help others in this bit through this business. Um, so I love, I love everything that you're saying, Lawrence. And one of my favorite quotes is actually uh, a John F. Kennedy quote. And it's, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. So are we living by, um, by our words? Are we staying true to what we think? Are we staying true to how we feel? Um, are we staying true to why we are involved in this business, which is to help others? Um, and have gratitude for those that have helped us and are helping us today and tomorrow. Um, not looking back at the past, but living in the moment and thinking about where we want to be in the future. That's the, the walking of your talk. Walk your talk. And no matter what anybody says, unless you're you know, doing something that's really stupid or proven wrong or you know, way off the, the, the mark but if you if you in your heart believe you're doing the right thing and you walk your talk that takes personality because as you said dan it's not it's not easy to weather the storm the storms of criticism and sometimes you know we get criticized for doing something um because we're actually doing the right thing and we're not just following being like sheep and doing what everybody else is doing so, you know, uh, one of the things was, what's the genesis of our mindset? What, how, did we, how do we form this mindset? I don't know. I'm just asking, does anybody, um, has anybody here done Landmark Forum? Has anybody, if you've done Landmark Forum, if you could put up your hand, I just want to see if anybody has done it. No. Okay. Nobody done Landmark Forum? Okay. Well, I mentioned that because this is one of those um, one of those um, places where we can actually learn about ourselves in front of a group of people. And Landmark Forum was uh, they have I've been to obviously several of those, and they start off and they may have three four hundred people in the room, and they will then say who for example who likes art whoever who really doesn't like art and then they call up the person who says no i don't like art by the way in that forum there could be doctors judges convicts um architects mechanics it's just a cross-section of everybody there's no absolutely no distinction on anybody and then they'll say well come up onto the stage and then three, 400 people. And they say, well, you know, tell me about why you don't like art. Oh, <laughs> I'm useless. I don't like art. I hate it, whatever. And then the person will say, okay, well, tell me why. No, well, you know, I'm, and they'll delve in, delve in, delve in. They make you cry in front of 400 people. And the result is that when you were four and you were in, in a class, your teacher said something that, that was not complimentary about what you were doing. And that switched you off. And for the rest of your life, you think you're useless. You think you can't do it because somebody at four years old told you that, come on, man, that's not art. You, that's ridiculous. Look how Cynthia's doing it. She's really good at this. And, and it just takes something to spark the beginning of a mindset that we have for the rest of our lives. So we may, for example, I've always been absolutely convinced and I'm pathetic at art. Why? Because I had that experience. But, but it doesn't mean to say that I am useless. It means that my mind thinks I'm useless because I was told I was useless at a moment when I was in the formative years. So I'm just saying, and that's why I'm asking if anybody was in land art forum because, I, and we, maybe we can put it out there to, to, to everybody else and say, you know, what makes you tick? What makes, what, what inspires you? What, 
what, what are your apprehensions? And then why? Why do you have the apprehension? Why do you have these fears? And why are you so enthusiastic? Dad, why are you th so enthusiastic? I'm just enthusiastic because when I get passionate about something, I, you know, I have a lot of enthusiasm for it. You know, I don't really, I, I like thinking outside the box. I like doing things that other people are afraid to do or, you know, are worried about what people are going to think if they're doing it. And so, you know, for me, you know, like I said, at, at first I was, I was, I had that concern, but that's not really living true to yourself. You need to live true to yourself and what your motivations are and what you want to do in life. Uh, so that you don't have regrets down the line, you know, and for me, it's about doing what I feel is right, doing, helping people. This is a great business because we can actually help people through this business. And I can't think of any other business that I've been involved in where I could actually help people through that business without them having an investment. Um, you can actually do that in this business. And so that's what excites me about this business. And, you know, it's the right place. It's the right time, you know, we had the pandemic, people are more interested in their health now. Um, coming out of the pandemic, nobody wants to go back to a nine to five job. So we have lots of people that we can, we can help um, find their way uh, as they move forward coming out of the pandemic. And, and you know, that's exciting to me. Um, talking to people from all over the world that I never would have really had the ability to do before in my former job. And, you know, I always had the goal to retire when I was 45 and or, or 50. And what I wanted to do then was help other people in some form or fashion. Um, you know, one of my, one of my things that I am still yet to get to is Habitat for Humanity. That's something that I want to spend time doing moving forward, building homes for people that can't afford homes. Um, but through this business, I can also help people who, you know, maybe need to make an extra $500 a month or $1,000 a month. It doesn't sound a lot to like a lot to us, but to a lot of people, that's a lot of money. And that, that's life-changing for a lot of people. Um, and we have the ability to do that through this business because there's some systems in place. And if we just get people to, that are coachable that will follow that system, we're able to help those people. But you see, Dan, that's what, your mindset is actually um, a result of your upbringing, of your childhood. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I have eight brothers and one sister. Okay. And who raised you? Who raised you? All of you? Uh, my mother raised seven of us. We're still in the house after my parents got divorced. And right. she had to work three jobs to support us. Ah. And so my, you know, my passion is if I can help single, single mothers make an extra 500,000, 1500 bucks a month, you know, that's a, that's a win for me. That's a win for their family. That's a win for those children who might get some things that they want, not that they need, but some things that they want, um, rather than just surviving, then they're, they're thriving a little bit. So that's my point. My point is the mindset that we all have. How, did, how do we get there? How did we, why are you altruistic? Why is somebody um, absolutely not, altru you know, somebody is, 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 a, is egoistic and other people are altruistic. Like for example, you, you, you had a, a childhood with your mom working three jobs, three jobs. So obviously your mindset was, that's terrible. I can't let other women have, you know, if I can, and other people suffer what my mom suffered. And so you, your, your mindset became one of abundance, one of, of trying to help somebody. You're not talking about habitat, talking about habitat for humanity. See, what I'm trying to say is that we, we should introspect and see how, why do we think how we think? And, and why, why are we, why are we in, uh, how do we get enthusiastic about something? How do we get less enthusiastic? How do we, how do we do, how well do we know ourselves? That's where it comes down to again, because we always say, who are you? How well do you know yourself? And what do you want? Those three questions. And those are all mindset questions. And if we look and say, you know, this is a business that I can do. Okay. You know, on a plane, the, the, the flight attendant says, put oxygen on you first and then on everybody else. That's what a mother does. She looks after her kids. A father supposedly is, does as well. So anyway, that's the point I'm trying to make about all this mindset 
is how do we think? Why do we think what we do? We're a result of our environment in a lot of cases, right? How we're brought up, where we're raised. You know, somebody who's raised on the East Coast is different than somebody on the West Coast. You know, and so we are a result of our environments, um, especially in those formative years while we're, while we're still growing and forming our opinions and forming our ethics and our morals and, and all of those different things. Um, and we're always learning, you know, and, you know, our educational system, and I don't want to get political here, but in a lot of cases doesn't really teach us those things. It's taught to us by our friends, our family and our friends, parents, or, you know, whoever we hang out with. Um, are, are really people that can help form our lives in a positive or a negative way. And, and it's up to us to decide how we're going to use what we've been taught or what we've seen. You know, when I first got into this business, it was, for me, it was about lifestyle. I wanted a better lifestyle, better work-life balance. I wanted to be able to, to work from anywhere. And selfishly, it was for me about lifestyle. And as I started to, to, to work the business, I started to realize Hey, I can help other people. This is a lifestyle business, right? It's it's we're teaching others that they don't have to have a nine to five job. That they can, if they if they put their nose to the grindstone, they work the system. They they get up and they're dedicated and they're committed, and and this is what they really want. We can help them do that, right? And as leaders, it's all of our jobs to do that um, to help lead those folks that want to be led, uh, and but more importantly, to make leaders out of them so that they can replicate and duplicate that. You know, when you say about the choices we make, and it's about street smarts as well. We, uh, the educators we have are the streets, you know. Um, and in fact, I joke a lot because, uh, you know, here we pamper our kids. And I mean, I live in a gated community, gated community, and the parents will take the kid in the car, literally 800 yards so that the kid doesn't have to walk anywhere and the bus will come there and make sure he's on the bus. I mean, so we, we, it's a mindset of how we learn to, to, to live. Um, and that's street smarts and other kids are, you know, born under a bridge sort of thing and they live on the streets and they, they know how to cross the road by themselves when they're seven without getting run over. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to make a point that that it's how we how we view our lives and how street smart we are. But I just want to mention something. When I years and years ago, um, I, I used to go to a nightclub when I was growing up, and there was a there was an artist in there. His name was Rudy. He was Australian, Austrian, and he was a painter. And he would be in there every night for like I don't know two months, and then he would disappear for two months. And, you know, I got to be friendly with him. And I said, Rudy, you know, I kind of envy you. You don't know what time of day it is, what time of week, it, what day of the week it is, what month it is, what currency we have. You don't have a phone, you're nothing. And he lived in a cave with an ex-Australian prostitute. And he said, well, we all have the same engine. Some of us drive with a foot on the accelerator. Some of us drive with a foot on the brake. Choose your own speed in life. Well, those are wise, wise words. And it takes courage to be able to do that. In his case, he thought he was his only option, but that was his talent. So, you know, the, the thing is also we, we, everybody dies, but not everybody really lives. We don't really live. And it's up to us to do that. And in this business, we can. We can afford to do, when I say afford, I mean, we can take the choice of doing stuff, not just to do with money, it's to do with time. It's to do with our freedom of choice of time and who, where we go, what we do, who we talk to. These are all choices. Don't have to get up at seven in the morning or six or whatever to go to work. You can work when you want, how you want. And that is a huge thing. We've seen from COVID that, that the world now has experienced staying at home and looking and saying, well, I don't really want to go and drive two hours every day to work. And they're all trying to find some ways of not doing so. 
we've got that. We've got a way of working from wherever we want. And that's power, right? Yes. We have the power to do that. And when you start thinking about power, you have to think about how are you going to use it power for good or are you going to use power for bad? And so I watched a, um, a documentary this week called The 75. It's a documentary about the 75th precinct in New York City during the 80, 80s and the early 90s. And it's about two, two cops who got into uh, police enforcement with the intention of being good cops. But what happened was they got in situations where they were able to steal money from busts that they were doing. And then that turned into them doing robberies and 25 or 30 other cops joining, convincing 25 or 30 other cops to do this. And they started a drug dealing ring, uh, but they finally got caught. But, you know, it, they were using their power to, for themselves. They weren't using their power to help people that they could have as being law enforcement officers. You know, they went the other way. They, they had street smarts, but they used it for bad, not for good. You know, we all on this call have street smarts. We all have the power to do what we want to do and live life the way that we want to live it um, while we're here. And so how are we going to use that power? Are we going to use that power for good? Or are we going to use that power for bad? It's up to us how we're going to do that. Um, I'm personally, I want to use the power that I have for good. I want to help people. I think everybody on this call has that same mindset, which is great. And those are the types of people that we want to pull into this business when we meet them. So does anybody have any, any, uh, in, anybody want to comment about any of this stuff? Anybody want to say anything? I was, um, so, so going back to um, environment, you know, there's, there's, I have a, a pretty small network, I guess, of friends. Um, however, I know that there are certain things that I would never go to them to validate my mindset or my vision or uh, my feelings because I know that they are on the same um, kind of playing field as I am. So like when it comes to like when it comes to what I'm doing now, like my bestie, love her to death. And, you know, I mean, I really do go to her for anything and everything, but she just stay at home bougie. Like, I mean, she likes to shop and she likes um, a really high uh, maintenance lifestyle, which good. That's fantastic. Make sure you have your nail appointment that day and your Botox the next day. And I mean, her priorities are completely different than mine. So Right now, my excitement in the business, I can't really carry it over to her because she doesn't understand. And she's not going to give me that reciprocated, um, I guess, validation of, of, yes, they're doing amazing, you know, keep on the grind. She doesn't understand any of that. So I think it's all about knowing your, your audience, knowing your friends, knowing who you go to for certain things, because that one person, even though you trust them and you value your friendship in one aspect of your life, they can really bring you down in, in another aspect um, if it's not something that they truly understand. Not necessarily saying anything negative, but sometimes you just need a little bit more empowerment. You need a little bit more encouragement on certain things. And sometimes people, certain people just can't give that to you and it can be discouraging. So I think it's just really understanding kind of what you're, what you want and surround yourself with that, those people that have the same mindset about that particular topic. Can yeah. You know, when, when I first got involved in this business, my brother's an orthopedic surgeon. I got my scanner. I was excited. I was scanning everybody in my family. I went up and scanned my brother and he just laughed at me. Now he's 50, 60 pounds overweight. He drinks like a fish. Um, you know, he said, you're not going to be doing this in six, in six months. He's like, this doesn't make any sense. And, you know, and I'm just like, okay, well, I don't necessarily need you in my life a majority of the time because you're not going to be supportive of what I want to do and, and what I can do to help other people. And, you know, and he's a very selfish type person. You know, it's all about him. It's all about, you know, what's in it for me. And, you know, that kind of, so you know what? I don't need you in. I don't need you as a major force in my life. We're still, you know, we're friendly and everything. But you know what? 
if you're not going to be supportive of what I'm doing, I've always been supportive of everything that he's done, but it's never been reciprocated. And for a lot of my family members, that's, that's what I get. You know, I have family members that are interested in the business, but they're like, you know, they don't want to do the work. They're like, oh, this is great. Why? Yeah, I'll, I'll join you. You know, you just place people under me and I'll make the money. And I'm like, yeah, yeah that's not how it works, my friend. You know, so you got to figure out. You, fig, you got to figure out who those people are in your life that are going to be supportive of what you want to do. I'm not telling you to get rid of those people who aren't supportive, but don't make them as large a part of your life because they don't have the same goals that you have. They don't have the same drive that you have, right? You have the, you, Riley has amazing drive and I would hate to see anybody thwart that. So when we release our attachment to what we think others should be doing, it is an amazing thing um, that I learned and I can't want something for somebody more than they want for themselves. And Riley, I am the weird one of my family. However, I am the most healthy and I don't have any prescription bottles in my home. Okay. Now, do I pray every day for everybody that doesn't get what's going on or that maybe has some deeper rooted things to why they choose Botox or whatever it is, the choices that they're choosing in their life that aren't necessarily the healthiest, you betcha. I totally do. That's where my energy goes with prayers in the morning to the masses, right? But as far as my focus is concerned, I learned to finally not want something more for the people I was serving than they want it for themselves. So I was able to move on. Does that still impact me? Of course it does. I'm a human being and my heart is like ginormous, um, which I feel yours through this screen <laughs> as well. So just a, a little food, food for thought. Thank you. And that's Thank very you. true. Uh, that's, just... Sorry, Lawrence. That's what I'm running into is um, I have a lot of people now coming because they see what I'm doing, but they don't want to do the work. They're like, and, and I'm like, literally, you're, you're on your phone already. You're, you are on Facebook. You are on, you know, you're doing this already. Why don't you want to make money on it? But they, it's, I don't know. I just can't fathom why. I'm, I'm throwing this amazing opportunity at you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to lead you. I'm local. We're going to Margarita Thursdays to strategize. I'm giving you a reason to leave your kids at home on Thursdays to, to go and grow your business. And I, I I can't, and so it, it's it's frustrating and um, it's sad. But I also know I cannot help. Again, I cannot help those people that do not want to be helped. Riley, can I say this? There are two different things here. One is when you were saying, you know, you you wouldn't get any encouragement from that person because she wouldn't understand. It's a different person. You don't need encouragement from her. That's what these calls are for. Yeah. What you, That's why I'm on here. <laughs> and you've got a whole team of people to help you. The other thing is the business side of it. Now, she's she's what I would... Well, I don't want to say that. Um, she would it's fine. It, this, is a, this is a safety circle. It's fine. Has a, she has a frivolous way of thinking of things, an egocentric, frivolous way of thinking. So guess what? Who does she know? They're kids, you know, a lot of these people who are drinking margarita champagne or whatever at nine o'clock in the morning, and they think they got the world by the, you know, they got the world in their hands. Have a look and see how their relatives are, how their sons and daughters are. A lot of these people, successful people, have big skeletons in the cupboard with their sons and daughters and cousins or somebody in there. That, that would benefit from you. So if you put it out there that what you're doing, but without, without trying to bring people, you will attract people by, doing, by being who you are. You will attract people. You are a natural inspiration just by the way you speak. So, and as we were talking about before, you walk your talk. You, you know, you're dedicated to what you're doing, you walk your talk, and, and success doesn't come overnight. It comes from, from, I mean, Tony Robbins was sleeping on a bench. I don't know if you know who Tony Robbins is, but he was sleeping on a bench. I mean, so 
success comes from leading by your being you as a leader. People will follow you if they see that what you're doing is something that is attractive to them and, and you will attract them to you rather than trying to push them or pull them to you. Oh, I have her as a walking billboard, though. She's got some white teeth and a tan like crazy. She's <laughs> using the glowing. She's using the soul solution. So if she doesn't want to join, she's at least going to be out there promoting. Yeah, there you go. Customer. There you go. Lawrence, one of the interesting things about this business is that with the self-improvement aspect of it and the ability to observe other people and how they're doing this business and more importantly perhaps living their lives what happens is you get to refine your values and you will find i am certain because i've found this that during the course of this trajectory that we're all on you will find that there are people who belong in your life and you will find that there are people that you really like for a long time that really don't belong in your life and it will change the way you make decisions about people that you have around you. And as you refine those values, it, it will suddenly occur to you, you know, I don't know why I have that person in my life. And there's a quote from Roy Disney, which I absolutely love, which is that decision making is easy when your values are clear. That's worth thinking about. And then this will give you, as you refine those values, it will give you the ability to make decisions as to who you have in your life. And it may well be that, that this particular lady, Riley, does not belong in your really close circle because you will find others who, are, who share your, your views, your values, the things that are important to you, and you will find that those are much more important to you ultimately than a more superficial friendship. I like that. Um, uh, you know, there's something that's that's also, if we get frustrated, it's our ego that's in the way. Why doesn't this person I see what I see? It's your ego. You know, let the ego aside. Just do what you do best and just do it. You know, Warren, but there's one here that it says, I get to do what I like to do every single day of the year. Warren Buffett, if you just love what you do and you do what you do well, which you will do if you have passion, you love what you do, other people see it. Mm -hmm. And they'll follow you. They'll follow you because they say, my gosh, I want what I want to have your peace of mind. I want to have what you've got. I wish I could do what you do. I wish I could have what you've got. All of these things are leading by example. And you don't have to worry about, you know, oh my God, this person doesn't see it. Let him go. Riley has a Riley has a work ethic and a drive that you yeah. don't see very often. True. And she's going to be successful in this business. And within, you know, six months, a year, two years, she's going to be one of those people that people say, oh, she's so lucky. Yeah. yeah. I, but it has nothing to do with luck. It has everything to do with your hard work, your drive and your passion. And, and like Lawrence said, you're going to find those people, you know, these diamonds, they, they come to the surface. Um, you know, you, you might have 10 people interested and one of them is going to come to the surface and be like, yeah, I want to do this with you. And that's how you're going to start to grow a team. You know, I, I have a woman across the street that bought dramatic effects from me. And, you know, we're not super close with them because of their political religious views, but I went over and I delivered hand delivered it to her. And we started talking and she's like, what are you, what are you doing? And I started telling her about it. She's like, you know, I just told my husband, we were just talking about it. We need to figure out a way. She's a, she's a, um, a house, uh, house cleaner. She's like, oh, you know, I'm getting, I'm, I'm almost 50. I need to figure out something else. I don't want to be, I can't be cleaning toilets for the rest of my life. I need to figure out something else. And I started talking to her about the business. She's just like, that's something that I'd like to learn more about. You know? So it's like, you never know where these people are going to come from and you can't have a closed mind um about who you want to let in and who you want to help it's funny yesterday i just put that quote kind of on my facebook page as my engagement post of have you ever um have you ever whispered why not me she's so lucky 
why can't I be her? Why can't I just have the same things that she has? And I did draw quite a bit of attention to it um, just from likes and things like that. But I mean, I myself have stepped back and I stayed, I, I have asked myself that so many times, you know, when you see someone else that's more successful or doing something, you know, you're like, well, when is my turn? Like, why can't that be me? And you don't know all the things that they had to go through to get there. Um, and I don't know, it was just, it, it spoke to me yesterday, which was why I posted that, because I know that that's something that truly every single person has questioned themselves, because you do compare yourself to, to someone else as to why can't I, why, why couldn't that be me? It's like an iceberg. <laughs> It's like an iceberg. 10% is, is above water. That's the success that everybody sees. And nobody sees the 90% of what you went through below the surface to get to where you are today, right? We watched a, we, we watched a movie this week called Hustle. I think it's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that is a fantastic movie because it, it is exactly the story of what we talk about, for example, we say, you know, um, uh, these basketball players who make bajillions, we see them making bajillions and we see them having fun and playing a game, but we forget that they get up at three o'clock every morning <clears throat> and they throw thousands and thousands and thousands of, of baskets, of balls, before they even get anywhere near anything. <clears throat> so the hard work comes from from having clear goals and what martin said i think that was very clear also <clears throat> have clear idea of what you want have no ambiguities have no doubts about your goals and and what you want and and you'll get there those three questions continue to come up who are you how well do you know yourself and what do you want those are the three <laughs> questions we have to really know because then we will not care what anybody, I absolutely care less what anybody thinks. I, I never have. Well, I don't say never, probably when I was a kid I did, but in my adult life I don't. I just do what I think is in the best interest of everybody as a team as a, and, and do the best I can. And if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Okay, and I'll accept it and I'll, and I'll introspect and I'll see, am I really wrong? What did I do wrong? Oh, because I didn't agree with you? Okay, well, let's see. Let's discuss it. You so, know, uh, sorry, go uh, ahead. I was going to say, uh, I just keep remembering what Pam uh, Vickers has <laughs> always told, me, which is the most valuable product, because we have lots of great products and platforms, and all, the most valuable product we can offer anyone in this business is the personal journey they're going to take. And, and I think there's just so much truth to that. Uh, because, you know, we need to understand the tenets of the business, one of which is what we said last week, I think, you know, uh, amateurs convince professionals sort. And Riley's frustration right now is she's like all of us. She's on this journey. And like you said, sometimes your ego gets in the way and it causes you to get real frustrated. Why is this not happening for me? These people need to understand. And at a certain point, as she stays on these calls, she'll develop like we're all trying to, uh, that, that self-confidence that comes from this journey that, hey, I'm not out here to convince everyone. I know what I'm doing. I'm helping others. I'm following Dan because Dan wants to help others. He's got a true, sincere interest in bringing value to others' lives. And with that, he wants to build a profitable business. There's nothing wrong with that. If this person doesn't see it, next <laughs> you're not you're not you know you just you're not ignoring them you're just moving on to the next one because that's our job yeah i i personally and i think i've said this before i want i want to get a no as quickly as possible because then yes. i'm not wasting their time and i'm not wasting my time i think that's one of the things you know when when we were at a conference i was <laughs> next to martin and he's like it really seems like you're trying to get them to say they either want to do it or don't want to do it as quickly as possible. I'm like, that's exactly what I'm doing. Cause I don't want to, you know, on to the next one. They say, no, it's not for them. That's fine. Next. I went yesterday. Um, 
uh, you know, I'm doing the social selling thing and I had somebody reach out uh, about, it, it's amazing. I guess there's been a lot of people that, well, I mean, actually, I know that there's been a lot of people before me that have started the business, had some success or made some sales and then got out of the business. And so I'm actually getting a lot of orders from people like, oh my gosh, I had no idea where to go to get this again. I had no idea, you know. So anyways, I had somebody that was using tanning lotion at the at the bank down the way. And so she was like, hey, so what is that tanning lotion? And I was like, amazing, a sunshine in a bottle, you know? And she was like, okay, how much is it? And I said, $35 shipped. And she said, how much is it if I don't ship it? And I was like, $30. She said, okay, I'll take three bottles. I was like, well, that was easy. Like I didn't even, you know, she's used it. She's, she's now using it. And she had had it on her legs, which encouraged another lady within the bank to get it. And so I go in and of course, um, one thing I am really learning now that I'm like the toothpaste slinger of E-Town is never leave home without painting lotion, firming gel or toothpaste in my purse um, so that I have inventory. And so when I go in the bank and I, you know, I come in and I'm doing a little dance with the packages you know here comes your liquid sunshine and um i ended up selling four tubes of toothpaste while i was in there just by going look at these things y'all want toothpaste you know never in a million years did i think i would go from selling a medical device of you know implants to slinging a 20 dollars tube of toothpaste but by god i'm proud of it now and it's amazing because people are just um I don't know. They're, they're, they're just intrigued. They were like coming out of their offices while I'm talking and I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to, can I just hang out here tomorrow and just get your customers as they come in? So I'm like, literally, if you can get into maybe one place, that's like a business setting, you know, an office setting, all of these people talk all the time. So it just takes getting it into one person and somebody noticed, you know, like, what are you doing? You're looking, you're looking glowing today. Your, your teeth are really shiny today you know oh hit my girl riley up she's she got a whole stock of that stuff over magnolia farms you know so um again never in a million years did i dream that this was the path that my life was on because first of all because of my pride um and i claimed even i know that all of you guys had heard my testimony when i started this like on the pharmanex side the last thing i ever want to do is go look look at this side of my face now look over here by God, I have the ugliest two pictures of me and the entire world flooding Facebook right now promoting toothpaste. <laughs> and I'm okay with it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's it, overcoming the ego. Anything that the, the, you came out of a comfort zone of shyness because you weren't, you weren't, I mean, you've not, you've not, you're not shy, but you, it's a, it's a different comfort zone. You were in medical sales and now you're showing your teeth. What the hell's that got to do with medical sales? And you and you're <laughs> vibrant and exuberant. And I even took a note: your liquid sunshine in a bottle. Wow, <laughs> good job, man! And you're willing to do whatever it takes to be successful. Yes. You're not you're not going to say I'm not going to do that because you know whatever reason you're going to you're saying hey if I can be successful doing this I'm going to do it because I'm going to do whatever it takes to be successful. And it's not, it, and, and the thing of it is um, what we're doing, it's not hard because our products are amazing. So it's not, I'm not out there promoting something that's not going to work. It's I'm not promoting something that I don't believe in. Um, it's really about like, even with the, with the tanning lotion, one thing that, um, you know, kind of validates too is with my lupus. Like I'm not supposed to be in the sun. The sun is not my friend, but tanning is my friend. Like it gives me a different confidence to be able to walk around a little bit tan, right? And so, you know, when I tell people that, and I'm not afraid to tell people that I have lupus and I've dealt with it for 19 years. And I actually had a conversation yesterday with um, a lady that has fibromyalgia and she doesn't know, you know, they can't diagnose her the right way. And I'm like, girl, we need to get you on collagen. Like that's really, truly going to help your joints right now. Um, and shared my story of, you know, the collagen with my lupus and my joint pain and all that. So she was like, okay, yes, please send me information um, about that. So it's really just about being, again, a product of the product, right? Understanding, believing, and then it's not hard to talk about something you're passionate about at all, regardless of how silly you might look <laughs> doing it. I'm super proud of you, Riley. You're, you know, you're an inspiration 
I think you're going to be an inspiration to a lot of people moving forward just because of your enthusiasm and your drive to succeed. And, you know, that's one of those things when you're in medical device sales, you don't really have that opportunity, right? It's a completely different thing. There's a bunch of people trying to, you know, outdo each other, not work together. Um, and, and so, you know, this is a business where I, you know, Riley is, is really shining. Yeah. Uh, and it's really fun to see. It's a success story for all of us, yeah. you know, to utilize. Um, so it's really inspirational for me. 100% Riley. Um, what Dan just said, I'm 100% in, on, on the same page and you, we've watched you from the beginning and you are an inspiration and good job. And, and you're, believe it or not, just what you do and maybe it, not everybody notices or that everybody notices, but nobody will say something for a while, but eventually someone is going to say, Oh, you know what? I remember. And then, and you, you're actually, you're leading by example. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. At the old, uh, you know, growing up, there was life, life cereal commercial. I want to be like Mike, you know, you're, you're going to have people, you're going to have people in this business looking at you saying, I want to be like Riley. And yeah. I love the post you did. She did a, she did a post the uh, the life of Riley, <laughs> which I love. That's gonna be my that's my blog. That's, that's your that's blog. Be I love that VIP thing, so that I can. Yeah. I mean, I do a lot of silly things. I I make myself laugh sometimes, and so I, those are that's what I'm gonna use that page for. Is truly just like that girl is off her rocker, a little bit, <laughs> you know. But it's just fun stuff. Like I get on my kids' hoverboard thing and play in the background, like rolling with my bestie or something or the Barbie camp or like, you know, drive, like just silly things that I do that I, I don't know. I just do them. And people are like, Oh my God, I can't believe you did that. I'm like, you can do it too. Come on over and hang out. Like get on your, get on your just carefree side for a little bit, get some wine and come bring a bottle of wine and come on over. That's great. Um, All right. Jim, just, Jim, it looked like you had a comment to make quick. Yeah. I think I cut you off. Breaking up. <laughs> that wasn't the that wasn't the comment I was expecting. <laughs> Love it. Who's making that comment? I think that's Jim. We're gonna mute him. Jim. Oh, okay. Well. By the way, so, <clears throat> I think, I don't know, we're well over time. I don't know if anybody else has got anything they want to add or. I think Jim <laughs> has something he wants to add. <laughs> oh. Jim, you're completely. Jim, you're frozen. Order. You heard nothing. I muted oh. him. Now he's back. No, I don't know. I, I don't know if I stepped on somebody or something, but. Uh... I was just, I was saying that uh, I re what I really like about Riley is her transparency. And I think that's a real strength of hers. And I just remember a few weeks ago, we had a call and Riley truly was expressing her frustration and whatnot. And it was a very open discussion. And I just think we can all learn from that because she will grow more than anyone through that transparency and what she learns from it and the feedback she gets from it. Dan, you know as well as I do as cancer patients, the worst thing you can do is be quiet about it. You yeah. need to let everybody know because you have no idea what everybody else knows that could help you. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, you know, you took the words out of my mouth when you said what about what right about Riley. I was just going to say the humanization, our humanization in public makes it that we understand that we're not different from anybody else. Everybody goes through trials, tribulations, and so on. And, and we're humanizing each other. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. We're going to wrap it up for uh, joining us today. It was a great call. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for participating. Uh, we'll see everybody next, uh, next Friday. Have a great weekend. Bye Thank guys. you. Everybody. Thanks very much, everyone. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thank you.